Howdy and welcome to the greatest country on earth, the United States of America. We are here for the United States Grand Prix here in Austin, Texas. The sixth time the Grand Prix is being held here at the Circuit of the Americas. The first two races being held at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. The third of five circuits in the Canada that is counterclockwise. Five teams have won here in the US over the past eight, eleven seasons, sorry. We have Ferrari, Mercedes, McLaren, Red Bull and Williams. So we've got a variety of different winners here. The previous winners at the US Grand Prix, however, has got a variety of different winners as well. McKenzie winning the last two years, Will Neller, Florent Volker, Waze Cooper, Yuri Marta. So we've had a few winners here and many of those drivers still on the cat still racing on the OC circuit today. It's the lap record here at the Circuit of the Americas set by Warner in 2015 at 137.246 56 laps, a circuit length of 5.513 kilometers, 20 corners and one of the, personally one of my favorite circuits on the calendar it always provides a pretty entertaining race being very close to the end of the season the tires we'll be using for this race will be the soft tires and the driver of the day from last time out in Japan was Franco Lopez for a very impressive third position the race of course being won by Florian Volker who kept his faint championship hopes alive. Now the starting grid for the US Grand Prix on the front row it is Florian Volker once again bringing that momentum into Texas and to Ferrari 1-2 as well because it was alongside him in second. I bet you would be saying that in real life. Armour Carr in third and Jay McKenzie using the Canadian nationality here in fourth position. On the third row of the grid we have Will Neller for Mercedes and Rick Yan for Force India. Row four of the grid we do have Nicholas Galf Red Bull and George Roke uh, getting his best qualifying of the season in eighth position. A very impressive performance by the house driver. Roller Moitin in ninth for Williams and Franco Lopez in tenth for Force India. On row six of the grid we have Joel Hatter for Haas and Julius Anderson for Williams. Row seven of the grid we have Evan Byrne for Renault and Roberto Gamba for McLaren. Row eight of the grid, 15th and 60th positions we have uh, Franco Gamba for Toro Rosso and Thierry V now Tyrannon for Renault. On row nine of the grid we have Oliver Glazer for McLaren and Paulino Tomaselli for Sauber in 18th position. The qualifying was dry as well. Uh, Etienne Jones in 19th position and Michael Mocho, not a great qualifying for him, in 20th position uh, on the penultimate row of the grid. And on the final row of the grid we have Felix Sontag for Salva and Nicholas Zorbach for Mana. So that is the grid for the US Grand Prix. And team news, once again only one driver being announced this week with George Roke being announced that he will remain at Haas for the next season. So it's going to be very interesting uh, for the next three races of the season, or for the last three races of the season, who's going to be announced. It is going to be very, very busy. Track-wise for this race, 0% chance of rain. It will be sunny as it always generally is in Texas. So here we go. That's the weather. And we're now on the grid. Flora Volker on pole position. Willis behind him, or Willis alongside him, I should say, in second. Car in third. Who's going to jump into the first corner? As the five lights are now on. And we're underway here in America. And Volker has made a pretty good jump off the line. But Car has actually made a great start from third behind. He's got past Willis already into the first corner. And he's trying. He's always hitting the back of Volker. Volker actually goes right over the curve. And Car takes the lead. What a start for Armour Car. That's exactly what he needs. As Zorbak is almost stationary at turn one. Oliver Glazebrook appears to have got damage. And I think Franco Gavra's got damage as well. But uh, something has obviously happened at the back of the field. So we're going to go on board with the Sauber of... I think this is Robert, uh, Oliver Glazebrook, sorry. And let's see, and he goes into the back of the Toro Rosso, that is Frank Gamber in front of him. And we're looking at what happened with Nicholas Zorbach, I don't know if he uh, got into someone or not, but he was almost stationary at Turn 1. And the answer is no, he just, yeah, pretty much the whole field, the back of the field stopped there at Turn 1 to uh, survey the chaos in front of them. But Amakar, what a start, he launched off the line, got way past Willows uh, into Turn 1. And then as he came behind Volker, he just goes wide over the curve, loses control and actually nearly collects uh, Carr as he rejoins the track there. That could have been very uh, dangerous. Uh, but Volker loses the lead and Carr makes the best start that he could possibly want. And he takes the lead to the first corner. So that is precisely not what the Ferraris wanted to do in this race at all. So as, as we look at Willows who uh, was trying to get past uh, Volker there. As is Lopez battling with his teammate Rick Yan. And they don't make the move there. Hutter's up to ninth. He's got ahead of Roke as there's a few more cars trying to dive down the inside. Roberto Gamba trying as a move as well as the rest of the cars come through. But at the moment, Carl's already got a decent gap over Volker in second place. It's almost about a second already. So a fuel is obviously going to be a big impact as it always is. But it seems Carl has got, has got very light fuel. So it looks like he might be on a three stopper today. 56 laps. So three stoppers can be done here. But the question is, can you win the race on a three stopper? Uh, Volker managed to do it last week. 
So we'll see if it does work out for him or not. As we come across the line and car, sets the fastest lap of course, 1.7 seconds gap at the end of the first lap, Volker in second, Willers in third. You can see the rest of the top ten there as the cars all one by one into the first corner. As the two Williams of Rolla Moitian and Julius Anderson battling for 11th. And Moitian holding on uh, from behind as now Tiernan makes contact there with the Torosso of Mocho into turn one. And fortunately no damage was done to either car there but uh, now Tiernan really got some air. And as we look at Mocho going into the first corner there just made it through on the inside. Saw the gap and unfortunately there was just not quite enough room as now Tiernan actually turned in quite severely almost right into Mocho. Uh, but fortunately, I mean, even though it got lifted very high into the air, no damage was done. So that is a big relief uh, to both drivers. But as we look through the rest of the field, we are looking currently at... Uh, this is Pino, this is Joel Hutter in ninth, closing up to the back of Lopez in front of him. Volker's still in second, but he's slipping away more from Carr. The gap's probably about two seconds now, as both the, as the two Williams once again battling. Anderson down the inside of Moisin for 11th position. This is just outside of the points. And Anderson does it, and now Moitin's got several cars behind him looking to pounce on him. Evan Byrne being the first one as they come through the last sector of the lap towards this tight hairpin, probably the least appetising part of the circuit, really. It all slows down a bit. There's not really many overtake opportunities around this bit, but then, of course, coming around this long right-hander, then coming into the two left-handers at the end of the circuit, the fast one, and then the slightly slower one, the final corner, onto the front straight of a car, once again setting another fastest lap of 130.7 the gap to Volker is extending, but Volker is holding up all these cars behind him, he's holding up Willows, he's holding up the two Mercedes, he's holding up Gal who's just hanging on as well, so it's going to be a very interesting race this uh, running on lap 3, but who knows what is going to happen in this Grand Prix, but we look at the order, so Lopez has made a good start, so has Hutter, Roke's dropped down two places to 10th not a good start for him, Yan dropping down a place as well uh, so quite a few movers so far in the first three laps uh, the gap from car to Volker is nearly three seconds on lap three, so about a second per lap, it seems. The car is extending it over Volker, so we need to see how much he can do uh, coming up to the first stop. That is, if Willers doesn't get past Volker. Uh, but we will see as we look at the car coming down the back straight. It's his motion under pressure from Burn behind, trying to make a move. He fails. There was a bit of contact behind between uh, that was Mocho and Roberto Gamba there, but no damage was done. Burn, is he quite close enough to the back of the Williams? I'm not sure. I think is he just about in the slipstream and... I don't know, he's not quite close enough. No, I think he's... Uh, and even though uh, Anderson is defending... Oh, sorry, Moitin is defending as Mocho is trying to pass Roberto Gamba here for 15th position and is he going to make the move stick? And he goes around the outside and does pick it through up into 15th position. Great move there by Michael Mocho. Uh, not a good qualifying for him, started down in 20th position. Now Felix Sontag is closing up behind as well. As we're looking at Joel Hutter who goes wide coming into the bottom of the corner and rejoins and nearly takes uh, his teammate out in the process. Uh, fortunately no damage done but that could have got a whole lot worse for the Haas team there. Had to, well have Roke not turned to the left and avoided him there but you can see gets a little bit out of shape there just misses the apex goes wide over the curb and it uh, nearly goes into Roke there but fortunately no damage was done. That is a relief for sure. You can see Hutter coming back onto the track, but uh, he drops now behind Roke. But we're looking at the two Ferraris. You can see that you can see Car just in the distance there. I mean, it's interesting because Willis does not seem to be making uh, many inroads into Volker, and the Mercedes are not exactly making inroads into the Ferraris as well. It's kind of all just neutral. Uh, social distancing really taking. They're uh, rem being reminded of social distance, obviously. As the two Force Indias, uh, speaking of social distancing, they're not adhering to it as Lopez goes past Yan for seventh position. So a good move there by the Argentine on Rick Yan, of course. Lopez, who does also want the Mercedes seat, which will be relinquished by Warnella at the end of the season when Nella uh, retires from the top tier of the OC. He will be sorely missed. As we're looking at Evan Byrne, who is trying to pass Moitian for 12th position coming at the end of the straight and oh dear there's contact and both cars are out of this race burn is out and Moish is out you could just see that was going to happen and the incident between both cars uh, will be under investigation no surprise there I don't think uh, I think that'll probably be classified as maybe a racing incident I mean I don't think burn uh, burns move was really that on I think he probably should have backed out of it I think but as we're looking here at Volker on lap six of the race so far the gap to car is about five seconds now here is Mocho passing Tomaselli for 12th place. He's uh, carving his way through the field at the moment. He's up uh, 8 places from 20th on the grid. 
so that's a good start so far for Mocha, and he's got Anderson a few seconds ahead. Carr at the moment is taking it very easy out front. Volker doesn't have the pace, it's now six seconds as the battle between the two Mercedes of Nana McKenzie is on and with Gauch just hanging on the back of them as well. So there's battles still going throughout the top six and they're well clear of Lopez and Jan who's going to come under pressure from Roke and also from Hutter behind as well as we're going to look at uh, the move of Michael Mocho going past uh, Tomaselli coming on to the back straight gets on the inside Tomaselli doesn't really put up her defence and Mocho says thank you very much and takes the position so there we go and now here's Jane McKenzie who's closing up to the back of Will Niller as well as has actually fallen off the back of Volker, he's actually not very close at all as Frank Gamber is squeezing down the inside of, of Oliver Glazebrook here, this is the battle to not be last and Frank Gamber is not last, Glazebrook is now last so Frank Gamber moves up into 19th position uh, so a good move hit by him but I don't know if they'll get any points because they're way off uh, the field these guys as we're looking at Hutter in 10th and he's really struggling, he's locking up and going all over the place there as Roke is on the back of Ricky out in front of him he's going to make a move coming into the hairpin, he tries to squeeze him Jan, Roke can't make it stick there, there's nearly contact they get away with it but Anderson's now on the back of Hutter behind as Hutter seems to be struggling uh, quite a bit on his tyres it seems uh, not quite close enough there coming onto the back straight though as we look through the rest of the field at the moment, McKenzie's still stuck behind Nella at the moment. Can't get through. I don't know if there'll be team orders there, because obviously both Mercedes are in the title fight. As, speaking of uh, Haas, uh, George Roke is coming into the pits for his first stop of the race. So Roke so far had a had an okay race, but on three stop, you might expect him to be, uh, well, have more of the pace that he had in Japan, because he obviously was on the three stop and eventually finished in uh, ninth position in the end. Pretty sure. And he could, it's probably the best he could have got, to be honest. Uh, had he passed maybe Rick Gann at the end, it could have been a bit better, but ninth was a pretty decent result on the three. Around Japan as well, which is not particularly well known for three stops, or not necessarily known to have the best strategy for three stops. But as we look at Rope coming out, he'll come out just ahead of the manner of Etienne Jones in 18th position. Now, well, as you can see, just not quite close enough to go on the back of Volker at the moment, and you probably think that he'd want to get past Volker just because Nella's behind him as well and that will allow him to close to the back of Nella in the championship but at the moment everything is very cool, calm and collected uh, after the first 11 laps of this race but of course we all know it's just not going to end out that way as Anderson goes into the back of Mocho there no damage was done although Anderson trying to go around the outside of Mocho he can't make a stick there and I saw the car behind I think of uh, Paulino Tomaselli is going to be pitting this lap and it was actually because uh, Mocho had actually passed Anderson it seems coming uh, onto the back straight and Mocha just went down the inside very easy Anderson again didn't put up any defence and Mocha just went through there and Anderson tried to get back at Mocha, had the still had the slipstream off the corner and coming down the straight you can see just eventually right about now you can see he's now in the slipstream look at the amount of speed 300 nearly 340 kilometers an hour it was obvious that was going to happen but fortunately Mocha stays ahead uh, when well he would have been pretty uh, cheesed off had uh, he not uh, had he been knocked off having just passed Anderson but here is the Sauber of Paulino Tomaselli into the pits for his first stop of the race and as he comes in as Emburn is receiving a 5 place grid penalty for the causing the incident with Roland Moitchin so I guess that's not really too much of a surprise I think probably more than a 5 place would have been pretty harsh I would say and in the OC obviously we don't give out penalties uh, willy nilly Pressure. but uh, the there we go as we look at oh, Tomaselli coming out of the pits 7.7 .7 seconds stop and as he comes out onto the circuit as we look at Alma Carr who's coming into the pits uh, for his first stop for Red Bull so here we go and I imagine this is going to be a three stopper because he's pitted before lap 15 I think if it was past lap 15 maybe 15 16 you could say he might go for the two I don't know but he obviously values pace over necessarily strategy I guess so uh, 15, so yeah, I'd say that's probably going to be a 3, I would think. So where is Carr going to come out that that's going to be the most interesting thing? So he's behind, obviously, the top 5. He's out of the top 5. He's behind Gal. Will he be behind Lopez in the Force India? The answer is, I don't know where he is, and no, he actually he will, sorry, he will be behind. He'll be in clear air apart from that Force India, so I guess that's not too bad for Carr. Had he been behind Yan, then that would have been a different question. Uh, but at the moment, so of course, it's the two Ferraris out front, Volker and Willows. And Nella still in third position with McKenzie now really hounding him for that position as he has been just kind of really behind him 
uh, keeping cool for the first 15 laps but now the tables have turned or s the floodgates have now opened and uh, now McKenzie is going to try and get past uh, his teammate Warnella but I don't know how Warnella will like that because of course as I said Warnella is leading the championship at the moment and McKenzie although he is still in the title fight you got to think what they're going to do here will they will they prefer uh, the leader or the guy trying to close down the leader it's interesting to see how that will work out here is the house of Joel Hutter <coughs> on the back of uh, Rick Yan uh, trying to get through on the inside down the back straight he's trying to move he's going to try to squeeze through is he? No! and he can't do it there as they come through and nope he stays behind here's Tomaselli who's on the back of Etienne Jones in the manner as they're coming towards the first corner he's now on the inside and does he make it stick? Jones has got a little bit wide and I think Tomaselli's got it has he? Yes he does make it up into 17 P17 now he's got the Torosso of Frank Gamba close behind who's going to try and make a move as well. He Thomas said he just about squeezing to him the inside. I wasn't sure if he had it done or not, but he just had the run off the corner on those pressure tyres and he gets it done. And as we look at the Torosso of Frank Gamba, who now himself is going to go through past Etienne Jones if he can, heading towards the end of the back straight. He's not quite alongside as they go into the corner and no he now goes on the inside and takes the position so he gets through and now he'll probably go after Tomaselli Frank Gamba if he's got the tyres that is as so the two Ferraris still leading at the moment as we're looking at Frank Gamba who is now making a move on the inside of uh, Jones uh, oh, this is the replay I think wasn't it uh, we just saw that didn't we so I think that was I'm pretty sure the replay unless we saw Mocho going past someone else um, but he was in 15th, was Macho, so unless I'm getting myself confused, but let's just move on from that. Um, Miklas Gao in 5th position at the moment, who is uh, just been running there pretty much the whole race, you could say. Nello, who's been just ahead of his teammate for the whole race. Glazebrook goes into Jones, and Jones goes wide, and yep, he takes 19th position, does Glazebrook. Very ruthless from him. Uh, but this is unfortunately not the race he wants if he wants to keep his seat for next season in the championship. Just goes almost piling into him, using him as the break, and he makes it through there. Now as you look at the tour also of Franco Gamba, this is him I know because he has that pink helmet. Um, and no it isn't, it's Mocho actually. Uh, coming through on the inside of now Tyrannan, heading towards uh, the end of the back straight. And... He makes it through on the inside, and he's up into 14th position, so Macho is through. Now he's got Roke, who's not that far ahead of him, and I wonder if he'll actually close up on him or not, because it seems Macho is pretty quick today, so we shall see. And as I, as I say that, he goes wide and loses the position to now Tyrannan there, so he drops back behind him, so that's not exactly what he wants. Jigged in there, I think you could say. Um, but there we are. As we look at it, he just locks up on those... Uh, new tyres and goes wide and then now turns and says thank you very much and he takes position back so not what Mocha wanted at all he will rather prefer he didn't make that mistake and stayed ahead of the tyre driver and so now turn takes the position back and now turn having a pretty lonely race outside the points at the moment but obviously Carr has got past uh, Lopez in the Force India and he, he, I think I just saw he's pitting this lap and now he's behind his teammate Gal who will obviously need to let him through because Gal I'd say is definitely not in uh, contention for the title fight as Hutter is on the inside and makes contact with Yan there they managed th all their car parts stay intact and he did actually make the move stick and so did Anderson he snuck through as well so poor old Rick Yan who's stayed out on track and has still got loads of fuel so it looks like Yan is going to be going for the one stopper here now here's the battle between the two Mercedes and the two Red Bulls car on the back of Gal and he'll need Gal to get away very quickly because actually Carl's going to be pitting in a few laps time as well so obviously being it looks like on the three stop so we'll see as we look at the two red bulls the two fries they're all everyone's close together they're all uh, close all the team drivers and now i think is that gal uh, trying to defend from car uh, mckenzie trying it on the inside anella does he make it through the answer is no he doesn't he still can't make it through and car doesn't make it through past gal either these two are now holding each other up and allowing the red bulls to close on them as well so this is very interesting to see how this is going to go uh, both uh, Christian Horner and Total Wolf will be absolutely bricking it in uh, the commentary box in the um, well in the pits. They're going to be telling their drivers to not uh, to keep social distancing and try and stay away from each other. Now is 
Carr going to make the move on Gow to the first corner. He's on the inside. Gow's not making it easy for him. There's a... F oh, look at that. There's a McLaren that's come out of the pits. And th Mackenzie's lost out badly there. Gow's got through and so has Carr. But Carr's <laughs> is still stuck behind Gow, who he would have preferred to have overtaken. But they've got through one car. I guess that's not too bad. But Mackenzie got really badly affected by that McLaren. And luckily for, uh, for Gow, he went into the back of that McLaren but didn't get any damage. That could have been a whole lot different if that had happened. And that would have allowed Carr to get through both pretty quickly. So, see the McLaren just come out of the pits at exactly the wrong time. The worst possible time to come out of the pits was that time. And he came out. The car is up to fifth, but still behind Gal, which he wants to be rid of. And actually Gal, as a matter of fact, is going to be pitting probably either the next lap or the lap after. Uh, so Carr will be pitting a, lap, a couple of laps after him as well. So this is for position right now. So Carr does need to get through Gal quickly because he's clearly very quick. And Gal is clearly not as quick as he's seemingly as he hasn't pitted yet. So as Carr is right behind Gal coming on to the back straight, and surely he's going to make the move now as he's in the slipstream as they head towards the end of the back straight, side by side between the two Red Bulls, just about Carr squeezing it through, and surely this is going to be the move right here and now. And he still hasn't done it. That's not good for Carr. That's good news for Volker and Willers up front. As they, once again, they've not been battling, so they've been just going at their own pace. Willis has been just sticking behind, as Carr is going to once again try and make a move. And now he is making a move on the inside of Gal. Surely this has got to be it done, and yes it is. He finally does make it through on the inside car. That is very important for him. But has he been held up enough for Volker and maybe even Willows, as Volker actually is pitting this lap, as a matter of fact. So here we go. In the words of Fabrizio Romano, here we go, as uh, Volker is going to be coming to the pits, so I don't know if he'll actually be coming ahead of, no, I don't imagine he would, because I imagine Carl would have closed off on him, I don't actually know what the gap was between the Ferraris and the Mercedes there, so I'm not exactly sure, so we are going to be, uh, we are going to see, as we s I saw another car coming to the pits there, I don't know if that was Gal or not, that could have been, and yes it is actually, Gal is in the pits as well, so Volker comes in, so uh, Carr is ahead, of course. I, I don't know why I thought he wouldn't be. But Carr is obviously ahead, but the question is... But the thing is, it would have been a lot more had he got past Gal and Mackenzie a lot quicker. So, now Carr's really got to get himself going for the next probably two or three laps before he pits. Because obviously Gal and Mackenzie will both be on fresher tyres, and will, as will Volker. The, all three of them actually pitted on the same lap, so here we go. This is very, very interesting. Indeed, as Anderson actually is going to come out ahead of all these guys, so... They might have to deal with Julius Anderson, actually. Uh, they might have to pass him, because Anderson is not pitting for quite a few laps yet. So this is going to be very interesting indeed. As we look through the field, here's Joel Hutter trying to get past. It looks like Felix Sontag into the first corner. He's not quite close enough, so he's going to fail to make the move there. Now here's Thomas Eddy trying to make a move on the manor there, but fails to do it. Uh, Willows is going to be pitting this lap, as Carr actually is trying to get on the inside of Nella here. He's going to be pitting in probably about two laps time, Carr. Does he make it round the outside? And the answer is yes. So Carr really has now got his skates on. And has got through past Will Nello. I thought he'd failed to do it there. I thought he'd done it. But I thought Nello was hanging it around. Yeah, that's only had the inside of the corner. But Carr, just on those fresher tyres, gets to run around the outside of the corner there. And gets through on uh, well around the outside. As now Willows does come into the pits for his first stop of the race. First of two, I would imagine. So here we go, into the pits he comes, and let's see how quick the stop will be for Ferrari. This will be very important for him, to see where he comes out. So it changes all four tyres, it'll be two stopper of course, and they go out, 6.8, that was pretty good. So the question is, does he come out ahead of like McKenzie in that? Uh, as we look at Willow's coming out of the pits, so Volker's coming down the straight, this could be very close. Does he come out ahead of Volker? I don't think he does, and no he doesn't, so he comes out ahead comes out behind Volker but crucially comes out ahead of Anderson who's held up Gal so that's very important for Willows so that is good news for him so he comes out ahead of Anderson who right now could really scupper McKenzie and co behind but at the moment Carr has already got two second gap to Nella having taken the lead but of course he'll be pitting very soon anyway so the gap was it 22 seconds it is uh, but oh as, as uh, Jan is really holding up the Mercedes of McKenzie here <clears throat> and so McKenzie behind Jan as well, so that's not good for him either. So unfortunately McKenzie has really lost out here, and that's not what he needed at all. Uh, but there we go. 
as now Mackenzie's not only got uh, well, uh, has not only got the force in the front, he's got the Tauros of Macho behind him, which is not what he wants. He would have rather been ahead of Yan, and he wouldn't have to deal with this. So he's going to try and make a move on the inside of Yan. He's not quite got that yet. As Gal's desperately trying to make a move on the inside of Julius Anderson here, and has he made it stick? And yes, he has. He moves up into fifth position. As once again, Mackenzie fails to make it through on the inside of Yan there. So he's going to have to wait another few corners. So that's not good for him. The gap car to Nella actually is down to 1.6 actually. Down a little bit. The gap is 20 seconds uh, to Volker. It's 24 to Willow. So he, he'll be behind Volker. But he might, just might, get ahead of Willow's. I'm not sure. It could be very tight. But uh, we shall see. I don't know if when car is pitting. It must be next lap. Surely it must be. As we look at uh, Mackenzie really struggling to get past Yan here, who's really holding him and Mocho up behind. Oh, and there's contact! And Mocho makes contact with the back of Mackenzie there. And oh dear me, that's not good uh, for uh, Jay Mackenzie getting punted up the back by Michael Mocho, who uh, decided for this race to swap helmets with Franco Gamba. And couldn't quite make it down the inside, could Mocho there. As now Warnella has come into the pits. I don't think Carr has, I'm pretty sure, so I think Carr must be going for one more lap. Manella comes in, 6.2, that's pretty quick as well actually for Mercedes, so good stop by the Mercedes crew, there's actually a few drivers coming to pit this lap as well actually, and as a pit call for Armour Cast, he will be pitting this lap, so this is going to be very inter interesting to see where Carr comes out of the pits, uh, so he's coming down the back straight, Volker hasn't got any traffic ahead of him, or it's at least close to him I should say, uh, Mackenzie still yet to get past uh, Rick Yan ahead of him, so that is not good news for him, uh, Mocho is into the pits, Roke is into the pits just in front of him there and I don't know if I saw the graphic for another driver to come in, I couldn't quite see, I think there's another one coming in as well it is, it's Felix Sontag, Roke comes out of the pits, or does he? gets held up by Felix Sontag there, that's not good news for him and so that means Mocho has a chance to get away now because those two were in a battle but Mocho has won that battle, uh, thanks ideally to Felix Sontag there of course Sontag will be going to Williams for next season which I think he'll be pretty happy about. As we look at Roke, he comes out just ahead of Nicolas Zorbach in the manor there. But uh, that's not good news for Roke. He would have preferred to have uh, come out probably maybe even ahead of Tomaselli, but thanks to Sontag, that's not happened. But anyway, Carr is into the pits. This is where it gets interesting. We're down to the nitty-gritty. So he comes to the pits. It's going to be a three-stopper, obviously. And as you can see, it is. So he pits, changes all four tyres. Out of the pits he comes. And the question is, where will he come out? I don't think he, he won't come out in the lead, because Volker's already actually on the straight, so he's going to come up behind Volker. I'm pretty sure he might come up behind Willows as well, so it might be third position, possibly? Yes. Will he come out in fourth? Will he come out ahead of Gal? And the answer is yes, he does. So Carr comes out in third, which I think is probably the best situation for him, as Gal actually, I think, locked up slightly, coming into the first corner there. But crucially, Carr is ahead of Gal. That's exactly what he needs. And now he can go after the two Ferraris in front of him who of course will be both going uh, pit pitting once more I should say but of course uh, Carr is on the 3 on the fresher tyres and the Ferraris are on the 2 but right now Volker getting held up by this manner of Etienne Jones and he does get past him there but that's not what he needs at all with Carr just out of the pits as well so as they come through towards the back straight so Volker gets through and now Willows will look to get through as well so we're just about halfway through this race and it's quite fascinating to see I honestly don't know who's going to win today I really don't Roberta Gamba is in the pits for McLaren as well. So, as we look at the two Ferraris coming to the Willows now, right behind Jones, as here is Wolnella in the Mercedes, who's on the back of Julius Anderson, who's really pr uh, being a real pain in the backside to, well, a lot of drivers at the moment. Now, now he's going to, I think, swap to the left. I don't know if he made the move stick um, or not, but let's assume that he did, and I don't think he did actually, because he's still sixth in the order, so he didn't. So he's now going to have to wait a few corners to do so. But as we're looking through the rest of the field at the moment. Uh, so far still 20 cars left in this race I think. As we're looking at Roberto Gamba. Who uh, we saw come into the pits. But it looks like I think it was a problem. Because look at the amount of fuel he's got. Heading towards the uh, final two corners. And yes it was a brake issue for, Frac uh, for Roberto Gamba. But fortunately the pits were right there. So there we go. So that is lucky for him. That the pits were right there so they could fix the issue and he didn't have to go around a whole lap because there was obviously would have been a chance that he wouldn't have made it but fortunately for Roberto Gamba he's in the pit and he's still going now here's Nella who's still yet to get past Julius Anderson 
in the Williams as they head towards the first corner. Anderson goes to the left. Will Nella swap to the left? Yes, he does the dummy. Nella on the inside. The oldest trick in the book. And Nella has finally got through past Julius Anderson. That, but that's still not good for Nella because Mackenzie's actually still a bit behind as well. But the Mercedes so far have really been affected by the traffic more than the Ferraris and, and car. And it's affecting them at the moment. But we'll see if Nella can close up to the back of Gal in front as well. It'll be interesting to see if he does, as we're looking at the Toro Rosso of Michael Mocho on the back of the Renault, heading towards uh, the, on the back straight I should say, heading towards the left-hander. He's on the inside of now, Tyrannon, and he's on the inside, and he's more than past him. Yep, up to 11th, pretty easy move there. Now Tyrannon goes very wide as well, just to let uh, him go by pretty quickly. So here is Sontag, who's battling with Nicolas Zorbach in the manor. He's not. Anyway, he's, just, he's alongside him, but he's on the wrong side into the hairpin, and he's not going to do it there. I say hairpin. It's left hand. It, it looks like a hairpin, but it isn't. The Volker at the moment leading ahead of Willows as Hutter gets very close. That's the second time him and oh, and third time uh, that uh, Jan and himself have come into contact. But Hutter does eventually get past him there, but uh, not as clean as you'd uh, like. But he was giving him a few, just a few little uh, love taps there. There was one. And then just a th another one, just to say, get out of the way, man. And he finally does. He finally, uh, well, he berugingly uh, lets him through. As we're looking at Franco Gamma at Sontag uh, battling for 60th position. Well, I say Son uh, battling for 60th. Sontag is trying to get past for 50th in front. Uh, trying to get past the manor of Nicolas Zorbach as they come into the first corner. And there's contact, but fortunately no damage done. That's going to allow the McLaren behind him. I think, I believe that is uh, Roberto Gamba, I think, uh, who is going to try and make a move as well. But Zorbach went a little bit wide there. Sontag tried to sneak through on the inside, but there wasn't quite enough of a gap there. At the moment, Carr is he's not on onto the Ferraris like I expected he would be yet. As Sontag now on the inside of Zorbach, and surely he's going to make it stick. And he does. He's up to 14th position past the German, the two Germans battling each other, past the other German driver of Zorbach. As here we are looking at Amakari. He's closing up to the Ferraris. I don't think he's quite closing up as quickly as I thought he would. I thought he'd be on the back of, right on the back of them right now. McKenzie, having dealt with Jan, has now got to deal with Anderson as well. That's just the worst thing he would have wanted, unfortunately. The pit stops for him not really working out at all. So he's right behind the Williams as they head towards the uh, back straight and surely he's going to make the move on the straight because he's got fresher tyres and Anderson's still going I believe I don't think Anderson's actually made a stop yet I'm pretty sure and no he hasn't but McKenzie's going to try and do the hard way because well why not he's going to try and go around the outside of Anderson that's never going to work is he going to try and swap to the left nope because he lost too much momentum and so Anderson keeps the position so we're looking at Carr in third position now we can see the Ferraris in his sights they're right there but of course he'll want to get past them quickly and make a little gap before the final stop, that would be, I suppose, the ideal situation, I would think. As we look at McKenzie, still failing to get past Anderson. They've got a little bit more traffic ahead as well, uh, just for company. As we're looking at Roke, who's on the back of now Tyrannon for Renault. And uh, Roke's going to make a move on the inside now. Tyrannon not giving him much room, really, but Roke's on the inside. And he's going to make the move stick for, uh, that is, 12th position for P12. Uh, Roke's favourite position until... Uh, this race, of course, because it was the first time he'd actually qualified higher than 12th, qualifying in 8th position here in Austin, Texas. So that curse that's been going around is over. Here's Franco Gamba trying to get past the manor of Zorbach, failing. And he's now got his cousin Roberto right behind him in 17th position. So we're looking at Tomaselli now trying to get past the other McLaren of Oliver Glazebrook. And he's on the inside. And surely Tomaselli's got the move done, is he? Yes, he moves up into 18th position. Uh, I was about to say uh, battle for last position, but Jones is last at the moment. Car again, he's still he's just hanging around there. He's he's teasing the Ferraris. He knows he's the quicker car, but I think he would like to get the move done quickly though. Otherwise, uh, he's going to be under pressure from. I mean, Gal's not that far away actually. He's only two seconds off actually. So Gal actually is still in contention here. I would say uh, for the win. As we're looking at Mackenzie once again, just trying to squeeze on the inside there of Anderson, and oh, finally he's done it. He's finally gone for it and uh, made the move on Julius Anderson for 6th position there. Good move there by McKenzie, about probably 7 laps overdue, but he's finally done it anyway. But Volker leading, Willers is right behind him, and Carr is there as well. As I said, Gallus just there in the distance as well. He's not far off this. He's still in the battle for this win, I'd say. It's between, 
I'd say it's between these four, really. Uh, the Mercedes are a little bit far off, but I'm not going to count them out of contention yet. Uh, but uh, Willis really, really is closing on the back of Volker here. I wonder if Volker's tyres are starting to go off quite badly. Because look at the amount of uh, pace that Willis has seemingly got here. He's now all over the back of Volker, heading through the first sector as they head towards uh, the hairpin before the back straight. Look at that, Willis. He's so much quicker, it seems, than Volker. He's going to make a move on the inside of Willis, and he lets him through Volker. You could say that was tactical. But he does take the lead of this race, Volker. But now Volker's got to defend from Carr behind him, who's the quickest out of all of these guys. He's in the slipstream. Is he going to make a move on the inside of Volker? He's got the speed. He's got the pace. He's going to try and go for it on the inside. And he doesn't quite get it done there. Not quite enough room. Just not quite got the speed. But as you can see, Willis just suddenly closed up on that lap and, is ru and just got past Volker pretty easily. You could say that was team orders, but uh, I'm not sure because Volker's been leading... He's kept the distance over Willows for most of this race, ever since the stops. And so far it's, it seems that uh, Volker is struggling. Because look at the gap that Willows has got already. As Carr's going to now try and make a move. Oh, and Volker really is not letting uh, Carr through. And obviously for good reason. Because uh, Willows obviously in title contention. Volker is still in title contention. But only just about. I mean winning at Suzuka pretty much kept his title hopes alive. Car clearly the quick car. Look at the speed he's getting on the straight. He's now going to try it again on the inside, and sure he's got it done now. The answer is yes. Oh, that was close. But Car finally does it uh, up into second position. He goes, and now he's going to go after Willows, who's just passed uh, the McLaren there. So he's got a bit of traffic car to deal with. But after that, then he can really go after Willows, who's just in the distance there. So as we look at uh, Nella right now, running on his own in fifth position, uh, Gal. Who I think it'll be closing up to the back of Volker because I think Volker really is struggling on those tyres because look at the gap to Carr so Gal could close up here and possibly overtake him at the moment but Willow's still leading but Carr is going to be closing back on him pretty quickly as they come across the line we're now on lap 34 of the race well over halfway as Carr is lapping the McLaren of Glazebrook into turn 1 and he makes it through and you can see Gal is now already closed up to the back of Volker so here we go Volker is under pressure a lot now from uh, Gal, his tyres definitely seem to have gone off. They're, they've hit the cliff, and that seems to be it. As we're coming through the first sector car, the gap to Willows is 1.7 seconds. Volker three and a half off, but it's going to be more uh, if Gal gets past him. Also, it will still be more because Volker's really struggling on these tyres. So Gal now right behind the Ferrari. He's now going to try to make a move on the inside, coming into the corner, and yes, he does. And Gal moves up into the onto the podium into P3 and Volker is really struggling and he's got many laps to go until he pits so uh, unless Volker tries something else he could be off the podium today it seems and now you can see he's just alone in the distance in fifth as Gal goes past the McLaren of Glazebrook on the back straight there and moves up uh, further away from the Ferrari. The question is I don't know if he'll close up to Carr but the gap is down a tenth uh, Willows to Carr at the moment at this moment in time but I mean Gal has shown pretty, uh, pretty good pace in this race so far uh, he, he just about kept hanging on the back of these guys, so he's still in contention with this win for sure. It is certainly not over yet as Roke is uh, all over the place, locking up. He's under big pressure from the Williams behind him of Julius Anderson, who I don't know if he's pitted or not. Uh, I haven't seen him go into the pits, but uh, he, he's dropped behind Roke, so I think he must have done. Uh, so Roke getting under pressure there, and I'm pretty sure Anderson has because he's lost a bit of fuel, so I think Anderson has finally pitted for the first time and he's going to go past Roke who's struggling on these tyres on the three stop and he goes past uh, Roke pretty easily there but on the fresher tyres Anderson is through up into 11th position but Roke on the three stop it seems is not doesn't quite have the pace that he had in Japan as to say Mocha at the moment running in ninth position uh, from uh, the penultimate row of the grid from 20th to be exact so that's a pretty good uh, recovery so far and oh well, what's happened here Willis is out and Joseph Willis is out of the race what has happened and Carl's lost his wing oh, oh my word and they must have had a collision they must have done because Willis is out Carl's lost his wing I don't believe in conspiracy theories but surely Carr has just taken Willis out of the race and oh that the implication this has for the championship so what happened here so you can see Carl's closing onto the back of Willis who was stuck behind a lap car that being the manor there so Carr goes past uh, the manor, or he goes to it, absolutely launches it, oh dear! He launches it up the inside of the manor and takes Willows out in the process. That has got to be a penalty, bang to rights there. He was never going to make it through past Willows. It was the dive bomb 
of the century. I haven't seen a dive bomb like that since, I don't know, just since probably Sebastian Vettel's F1 career. Um, but Carr has taken Williams out. I mean, he has pretty much taken him out. That's that's all there is to it. He has really taken him out there. And if he doesn't get a penalty for that, I'd be very, very surprised. So with that uh, happening, so that means Nicholas Gow is now the leader of the race. So Nicholas Gow has got himself an incredibly lucky break uh, with that one. So he's now up into third, and he's part, of course, past the Volker track, and now it's first and second. So Gal is now officially the new leader of this race. So it's Gal first, Volker second, and Will Nella is actually up to third. That's great news for him in the championship as well. I mean, what happened to Willers there? Uh, well, that was uh, unbelievable. It, it could really help him towards his championship, but at the moment, Carl comes to the pits, and he, of course, will be going to the end now on this fuel. He's behind Franco Lopez, so he can still get some good points out of it. Uh, that is, if he doesn't get a penalty. Uh, but at the moment, the gap Gal to Volker is about 3.1 seconds. Uh, Nella is quite a few seconds off the back of him, so I'm not sure if he's going to close up to him or not. Um, but Volker is really struggling on this tyre, so I think Nella could close up to him, but it depends how close he will get. Uh, Ricky Yan, as you can see, is in the pits for Force India for, I believe, his final stop of the race. Let's look at the gap. Uh, Gal is now up to 3.3, so Gal clearly, obviously, the quicker car, Volker really struggling on his tyres, but of course he'll be going longer than Gao, which I don't really think will be in Volker's favour, to be honest, if Gao can, will continue getting away like he is, as he comes round the f uh, the fast right-hander towards the end of the lap. But at the moment, Carr, as I said, in sixth position. He can still get some decent points out of this race, as long as he keeps it clean. But, as we look at the rest of the order, so McKenzie's fourth, Lopez is in fifth, I think he has to pit before the end as well. Um, Looking through the rest of the order. So Carr's sixth, he going to the end. Hutter is so much uh, very impressive in eighth at the moment. Anderson ninth and Roke at the moment completing the points in tenth. So that is at the moment the top ten, but of course still many pit stops to be had uh, before the end of the race. And we've still got 19 laps to go of this race. So who knows what is going to happen here at cir the Circuit of the Americas. So at the moment Volker really struggling on his tyres. I wouldn't be surprised if Nella gets up to him before he stops, to be honest, uh, because he's really, really struggling. He's losing the gap to Gao. It's now over four seconds. So Volker is really, really struggling here as they come on towards the back straight. Four seconds, and the gap... Nella's only four seconds off. It was quite a bit before. Uh, so, yeah, I think Gao could... Uh, Gao at the moment leading this race, but I think Volker could be in trouble from Nella behind if he's not careful. So here's Anderson in ninth, who's just lapped a manor, coming on to uh, pass the pit straight as he heads towards turn one, getting the gap to Roke. As we're looking at Ornella right now running in third position, and Miglas is off! And Miglas Gow, the race leader, is off! He is off the track! Out of this race, I can't believe what I am seeing here! Miglas Gow, who took the lead after Carr and Willows collided, is out of this race with a mechanical failure! I can't believe what I have just seen right there, a loose wheel and unbelievably that is going to hand the race lead to Florian Volker Wunella will be second and Mackenzie will be third so it was coming onto the straight and I thought, because I did see it on the dash but I assumed it was the, he was well he was coming into the pits but I didn't realise it was a problem but oh my word I can't believe it, Gal who would have taken an, would have taken, you could say a lucky win but he's kept pace with the top guys all day and taking the lead, I think, was the best thing he could have done. But unfortunately, it's put a curse on him. So he's out of this race. So I can't believe it. Volker has got himself an incredibly lucky break on worn tyres. He takes the lead. Nella is second. Mackenzie is third. Lopez at the moment is fourth. But he won't be for long because Carr... Oh, my goodness. Uh, well, he won't be for long because Carr's moved up into P4. So Lopez now down to P5. And, of course, Carr will be going to the end of this race. So it looks like it probably might be a top th uh, four for Carr at the very least as we look at uh, Roke in ninth place coming around the final corner there. I think I saw a car coming to the pits as well. But, oh my word, this race has taken an absolutely dramatic turn. It was actually Etienne Jones that was coming into the pits. The gap, Nella to Volker, it's coming down. It's 3.1 seconds, so the gap is slowly but surely coming down. Uh, and, of course, these two will be pitting in a few laps' time. I believe... I need to see what uh, Nella's fuel is. I think he might be pitting earlier than Volker, I think. Um, I believe. I need to have a look at the fuel again. Mocha at the moment is looking at Joel Hutter for six. This is quite an incredible recovery from Michael Mocha. So it's helped by the fact of what's happened up front. 
but it's still been pretty good by Macho. Look at the speed he's got as he just sails past Joel Hutter on the straight there. Look at that, and he moves up into sixth position. So far, a fantastic performance by Michael Macho, one of the drivers who's still yet to be confirmed for a seat next season. Of course, he'll if he is confirmed to Taurus, he'll have a new teammate, but we'll see. There's still many seats to be filled and not many races to go, so it's going to be a fascinating end of the season to see who gets the seats or not. So, at the moment, so Carr is going to the end. Anderson is going to the end as well. Nella isn't. Let's have a look at Nella's fuel. Uh, I'm pretty sure actually Nella's got less fuel than Volker has, so I think, yeah, I was right, I think Nella will be pitting before Volker does. Um, and look at Nella, he's now not that far away, and oh, and I say that, and he locks up into the final corner there, and he's going to lose all that momentum that he had, closing up to the back of Volker, it was less than two seconds, and now it's going to be back up to probably three, like it was before. As he was coming out to traffic, probably just got stuck in the, in the, uh, the draft of the cars in front, that allows the Renner to go back past. Manila actually is going to be pitting this lap, so that might be the end of his tyre life for him. As I just saw George Roke in the Haas pitting on the same lap as well. But as we see, Wilnella coming through into the last section of the lap. Coming through the long right-hander at over 270 kilometers an hour, or 260 kilometers an hour. And then as he comes through there, sick gear, breaks down two gears to four. Just three there, could stay in four, but now goes into the pits as Tomasetti's in as well. And look at that, Armour Car has received a 25 second time penalty for causing the incident with Joseph Willis. Not really much of a surprise there. So there we go. And uh, Nella is in the pits for his final stop of the race. And the question is, will he get out ahead of Volker? At the moment Volker was really struggling on those tyres, and with Nella on fresher tyres, I think he will just sail past him. Well, either if he doesn't get past him in the pits, I think our track will just sell past him. But Carr will, of course... Well, actually, I just realised, of course, Carr um, is ahead. So, at this moment in time, uh, Carr could actually still possibly win this race, if you think about it, because he's gone to the end. Nella will be on fresher tyres, but he's got quite a few laps to gain on him. So, I mean, Carr is still in contention to at least get a podium. I say that because I, cause of course, just realised he got the 25-second penalty. So, in essence, Carr is not in this race at all. Uh, but at the moment he's in third, uh, the captain Lopez, he, he, dropped, he dropped behind Lopez at this, mat at this moment in time, as now Tyrion appears to be lapping, or unlapping himself past uh, Volker here. That's not what Volker wants at all, as he needs to go to the pits soon, because otherwise Nella is just going to absolutely gulp him up. Mackenzie, of course, will be pitting before the end as well. So, at the moment it looks like it's going to be the battle between Volker and Nella, Two people you didn't expect to be fighting for the win. Well, I say two. Nella never really looked in it, to be honest. Uh, got held up after uh, his first stop. And, I mean, they got held up by Anderson. And, yeah, just it was off the pace, really. Just didn't have the pace compared to the guys up front. Compared to Gal, compared to Willis, compared to Volker. And compared to Carr as well. Sadie didn't seem to have it. And they struggled in traffic. As Anderson, who had been struggling in traffic uh, before, is now going through the traffic. How the tables have turned as he goes through past Joel Hutter for 6th position. And so Anderson, on the one stop, putting in a pretty commendable performance, I have to say, as we look at Mackenzie coming across the line, lapping Oliver Glazebrook in the McLaren, and he goes past him into the first corner. So there we go. And now Florian Volker comes into the pits for Ferrari. So we are now going to see if uh, he... Well, where he's going to come out of track. I believe he's going to come out behind Warnella. I'm pretty sure he is. So Volker now pits for new tyres. Um, Mackenzie will, of course, take the lead, but he has to pit for the end. As we've got a yellow flag out, and Oliver Glazebrook is out. Glazebrook is out of the race as Volker uh, comes out of the pits. Car, and Car's got damage again! And has Car gone into Glazebrook as well? I think that may have, maybe, what has just happened. So, quite incredible. So Car was in third position. He looked to be on for, well, possibly a top five with that 25 second penalty. He had traffic ahead of him, he had a Sauber in front of him, and he launches up the inside, oh my word, it's a deja vu moment. He's gone into Glazebrook, not at the same corner, but he's done the exact same thing that he did with Willows, tried to dive on two cars, but it was clearly never on, so the incident between the two will be under investigation, but I'm pretty sure Carl's going to get another penalty for that, because that's an exact replica of what happened earlier on in the race. So, as I said, I think Carl could get another penalty for that, and that could really dent his chances of uh, finishing high in the points, or even in the points at all at this point. He's got to go a whole lap without, uh, with, well, with a damaged wing. So he's going to drop out the top five for sure, as Nella goes past uh, Carr and takes uh, second position. So, <clears throat> there we go. 
but quite incredible. So it looks like uh, Will Neller, after Bikiti Pitch, is going to take the lead of this race. And that is something that I bet no one, well, I don't think anyone ever expected, to be brutally honest. But that is fantastic news for Will Neller's title credentials, because he's already ahead of uh, Willows by not many points, but he's going to extend that by a big margin. And after this, there's only three races left, so uh, we'll have to, well, I can't wait to see what the uh, points cap will be at the end. Uh, it's a shame we don't have live timing of the uh, points here, but uh, anyway, we'll see at the end. But here comes Mackenzie into the pits anyhow. So he was leading, but of course he will relinquish that lead to his teammates. So Nella will now take the lead. Volker, despite struggling on those tyres for a long time, is going to be second. And I think Mackenzie might be third. Cars obviously into the pits. Uh, so he's going to be out uh, of contention for the podium. And the team aren't even ready for him. And that's great news for Carr. Well, it's not really good news for him, of course. It's great news for everyone else with his 25 second penalty as well. So that just compounds Carr's misery. And I expect him to get a penalty for uh, what happened with Glazebrook. I'd be stunned if he didn't. But we'll see. So 14, uh, nearly 15 seconds that stop for Carr. Not what he wanted at all. So he comes out of the pits and he is going to be possibly even behind Ricky Ann that far. So at the moment, actually, Julius Anderson is at the moment on for the podium. On the one stop, Anderson might actually get the podium here. That is quite incredible. But he's got because of fresher tyres, so I don't think he's going to be uh, able to hold it. But this is a legitimate battle for position between Anderson and McKenzie. So Anderson defending there and not letting McKenzie go through. He really wants his P3. I'm not sure he's going to get it, though. And Mocho, I just realised, Michael Mocho is running in P5 from 20th on the grid. And I think he's pretty secure as well, because I don't think Jan is going to catch him. So I'm pretty sure he's on the one stop. And Mocho is on the three. So I think... Michael Mocha is in the legitimate P5 as well, so we haven't really noticed that. As Lopez goes into the back of Yan and makes it up into a uh, sixth position, and Carr sneaks his way through as well. Uh, but of course, it doesn't matter because Carr will be behind him due to that 25 second time penalty. So there we are. As we look at Yan down in P8, unfortunately, that one stop had been working until Lopez decided to ruin that. So he's now through. Up into P6, Carr up into P7. Uh, well, I say P7. Uh, but yeah, we'll find out so when it comes to the end of the race what that penalty will be put to him. So Anderson, 17 seconds behind Nella. Volker is 5.6 behind. So I don't think Volker has got an answer to Nella, it seems. I think Nella might have this race in the bag. He just needs to keep it cool because this is a big chance for him. If he doesn't take chances like this, then he won't win the championship or a championship, of course, this being his last season. So McKenzie's still yet to get past Anderson. He's been struggling. Both uh, Mercedes have been struggling to get past Anderson all day. And now McKenzie. On the inside of Anderson, surely he's going to get this move done. Surely Anderson has not got anything left in the tank to hold. And McKenzie is through and finally up into P3. I do feel for Anderson, but he's done a fantastic job on that one. So he just needs to get to the end now. Because those tyres are going to be pretty worn out. And particularly from battling McKenzie as well. But there we are. A great performance by Julius Anderson. As I said, another a great performance by Michael Mocho as well in fifth position. And here's Franco Gamba on the back of the Sauber, I think that was a Felix Sontag, as now here is Joel Hutter on the back of Rick Yan, this is the battle for P8, they head towards the end of the straight, Hutter, look at the speed he's got, nearly 340 kilometers an hour, he's going to try and make a move on the inside, a late move on the inside, and there's contact, and Hutter's lost his front wing, and that's going to eliminate any chance he has of getting points from today, and Hutter, that's I think the fourth time that he and Yan have made contact, or at least he's made contact with a, f a pink car, and, he's re and he clearly really doesn't like pink, obviously, because that's, the, that's the fourth time he's made contact with him. So, Hutter, unfortunately, could have been on for some good points today, but he is going to get probably nothing from this race. And it's generally, it's, it's all his own fault, really. And I think uh, Lo uh, Jan, sorry, was very lucky not to get any damage himself, but just, I don't know, it, there, it was just not enough room there. They both tried to go for the corner, so I think that's probably a racing incident. But Hutter, again, trying desperately to get through and fails, so he'll be pretty annoyed with that. So he's now out of the point. So Sontag at the moment, actually, I forget, from 21st as well, Sontag at the moment is temporarily getting a World Championship point. He's actually had a pretty solid race as well. Hutter having pitted his down to 14th, and now he's got uh, the uh, Wunella, the leader, behind him as Gamma goes into Sontag. And I think Gabba's made it through, as he? Yes, and Gabba's up into 10th position. So I actually have to say, well, lots of good recovery today. Franco Gamma from the back as well, having uh, been hit on the first lap, is now up into the points. So a good recovery by him as well. As we're looking at Anderson, and Mocho is actually closed right up to the back of Anderson. The gap was 
pretty big a few laps ago, but Anderson clearly on that on those tyres, they're pretty much dead. And Mocho is right behind him, and so is Carr. And <laughs> well, Carr has hit another 25 second tyre penalty because of the incident with Glazebrush. That's 50 seconds! I'm pretty sure that's one of the highest penalties we've ever, ever had in OC history. Uh, correct, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that there's not many more heavier than that. So Mocho now going after Anderson for P4. I don't think Anderson's got anything left to hold off from Mocho. He doesn't need to worry about Carr. He could just let him go because he's got that massive penalty. Michael Mocho from 20th on the grid on the three stopper is up at a P4. What a race! Swapping helmets has obviously worked. So Anderson, he's still in P5. He just needs to let Carr go because there's just really no point in battling him at all because Carr has got 50 seconds worth of time penalty so he just needs to leave him be. But we're now on the final lap of the race and here is your race leader Will Neller and I have to say his victory has definitely been a lucky one today not really been in contention for pretty much the entire race never had the pace struggled to get through traffic uh, the two Ferraris and the Red Bulls were the, clearly the quicker cars than the Mercedes today and they struggled to get through traffic but by pure luck you know with the car taking out Willows Gal suffering a mechanical failure while in the lead and Volker really struggling on his tyres, Nella has just in inherited all that and is going to take the win of this race and this is pig for him of course in title contention as Sontag and Roberta Gamba really battling hard for 11th position there because obviously we need to see of course at the end of the race because uh, of course Carr has got 50 seconds worth of penalties <laughs> I still can't believe I'm actually reading those words out loud 50 seconds worth of penalties so I think he could even finish outside the points car because uh, there's still 11 cars on the, well 12 cars on the lead lap but we don't need to worry about them. We are now looking at the race leader, Will Neller, who is coming around the penultimate corner, turn 17, and about to come into turn 18. He didn't have the pace today, but he's had luck on his side, which is something you ha you couldn't necessarily always say for Will Neller. But Will Neller comes around onto the pit straight and is going to win the US Grand Prix and take one step closer to the title. He wins, and what a crucial victory it is for him today. Now, Tyrion, a very lonely race in 13th. He just beats Hutter to the line. Volker takes second. He'll be pretty happy with that. Uh, um, and I think he, I think with that he just about keeps himself in title contention. I'm not sure. It's going to be very close, but a second is what he needs. And Mackenzie will take third position. He'll take the last spot on the podium. Mason Jones in 17th. Nicholas Zorback will finish another race in 16th position. Not been a particularly great race for Zorback, but he'll take another finish nonetheless as he comes around the final corner. But the car behind him, Michael Mocho, what an unbelievable race he's had. P20 to P4 fantastic result for him. Carr is fifth on the road, but he's not going to finish there. So Anderson will be fifth. Lopez will be sixth. Jan will clearly be seventh because that's definitely not 50 seconds. So, so Jan said, will finish in P7, not P8, but he struggled on that one-stop Jan, and he also got hit off by his teammate Lopez towards the end as well, which didn't really help at all. So Jan now comes across the line to take seventh. Uh, George Roke on the three stop will take eighth, but the pace compared to Japan on the three stop was not really there for him today because Mocho was, I think, on the s was on the same strategy and just had so much more pace than he had. But eighth Roke uh, after being announced for Hassan, he'll be happy with that. Franco Gamba he'll take ninth because uh, of that penalty for Carr. A great result for, for Franco Gamba considering the fact that he uh, got hit on the first that Roberto Gamba is eleventh, but I th believe that could be tenth. Uh, Felix Santa comes across the line in 12th. Uh, could be 11th? I'm not sure. That could be very close. We'll find out in the full race results. But Will Neller is your race winner. And a great result for him as we're going to take a look at the full race results. Will Neller winning ahead of Florian Volker in 2nd, Jamie Kenzie in 3rd, Michael Mutcher 4th, Julius Hans in 5th, Franco Lopez 6th, Jan 7th, Roke 8th, Franco Gamma 9th, and Roberto Gamba 10th. So yes, Carr did miss out on the points. And Roberto Gamba, now the two Gambas nabbing the last points positions there. That's an unbelievable sucker punch for Carr, who also set the fastest lap of the race as well, as you can see. 130.7. Felix Sontag, the last car on the lead lap in 12th position, with Thierry now turning, Joel Hutter, Paulina Tomaselli, Nicholas Zorbach, Nathan Jones a lap down, with Oliver Glazebrook, Miklos Gal, Joseph Willers, Evan Byrne, and Rilla Moiti the cars that did not finish this race. So now we'll take a look at the drivers and constructor standings after what was an unbelievable US Grand Prix. A look at the gap. Jamie McKenzie actually moves ahead of Joseph Willows into second position in the championship. I bet you wouldn't be saying that about five or six races ago. Uh, Willis down to third. Um, 
but Florian Volker up into fourth. He's, I think, just about in title contention. Amakar is out of title contention. Gallon sixth, Lopez seventh, Jan Anson more to complete in the top ten. Much moving up to eleventh, a great result for him. Burn down twelfth, Frank Gamma moving up ahead of his cousin, actually, Roberto Gamma, into thirteenth. Now Turin in fifteenth, Roke moving up to sixteenth, Hutter down, Oliver Glazer down, and Palin and Thomas Eddy down, and Jones, Sontag, Pascali, and of course Nicholas Zorbach in last position for Mana. So that is the driver's standings, and now we'll take a quick look, of course, at the constructor standings. Mercedes have still got a lead over Ferrari in second. I don't know if they can secure it in the next round or not, but Red Bull are definitely out of contention in third. For Cynthia fourth, Williams fifth, Toros are moving ahead of Renault into sixth, McLaren in eighth, Haas in ninth, Sauber in tenth, and Manor in eleventh. Also a battle for between McLaren and Haas there for eighth position coming up. But there we go, that was the US Grand Prix, and what a dramatic Grand Prix that was. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to, as usual guys, if you drive the day, I give the race rating out of 10. Thanks for watching everybody, and we'll see you for the next round, the Mexican Grand Prix, where Wunilla could, and the keyword there is could, win the title. Thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you there.